Hey everyone, today we are going to make a bottle of water in Blender and not only that, we are going to create cinematic animation for that scene. And I got this idea by observing my own bottle. Not that I just search uh, Punisher water bottle and straight up copied it from this nice video. Well, I made some changes myself in it like design of the bottle, composition, fingerprints, water droplets, color, background, etc. So watch this video till the end and I will recommend you to at least watch the final results. So let's start. First thing I did was to collect tons of the references from the Google. I selected one of the bottle, imported it as a reference in the viewport. It has total 5 parts that needs to be modeled. The handle, this and I sort of big button like things which holds up the handle, cap, this metal part and the body. I am using subdivision modeling technique which makes it quite easier to model. Then trace the outline of the bottle with a cylinder. Simply add subdivision modifier and add some edge loops to refine the edges. If you want the sharp edges, you just need to add a loop cut near the edges. That's it, we have our flask. Next step is assigning it proper materials. Let's start with the color. I will give it a cool aqua blue color. Increase the metallic value to 0.3 and roughness value to 0.4. Then we move to normal. To do that, I will use noise texture plugged into the bump node, which will give it a fine texture. Increase the size of the noise texture and decrease the strength of the bump node. So that's it, right? No, we need to make it more real. We will add ambient occlusion to the color part. Plug ambient occlusion node into the color ramp to get more control. I used mix RGB node to make ambient occlusion look more softer. I don't want ambient occlusion to look purely black color so I turned it into the color of a bottle and turned it a little bit darker. It works perfectly in the render view of the cycles. Now the roughness value is perfect but we want to add water stains running down the bottle to make it look more detailed. I found this free texture that will work well. To use it simply add a color ramp and plug the image texture to it. Set one of the sliders value to 0.4, which was our original roughness value. Now turn the slider to black and bring it near the white one. What it will do is it will make the stains part more shiny. But still, it feels like something's off. Now that's because we didn't add bump to those stains. To do that, add mix RGB before bump texture and subtract the stains from the noise texture by the factor of the stain texture. This will remove those little bumps from the stains and raise the stain part up. That's it, looks better than before. Moving to the next part, we have this metallic ring, which is just metallic. Just increase the metallic value and decrease the roughness. Then this handle, which maybe is made up of rubber. These button like things that has anisotropic pattern on it, which we can get just by cranking up the anisotropic value in the shader. At last, the bottle cap. 
I kept it a bit metallic and black like a matte finish but a little shine. But you may have also observed that our fingerprints get imprinted on such surfaces. I wanted to add that on our cap. So I searched for the fingerprint texture on Google. Some of them were free but had very low quality while some had too much density of the fingerprints. So I downloaded a free pack of fingerprints and randomly scattered them on a plane using geometry. Then rendered it and saved it as a PNG. Now I plug this texture into roughness node. I tried to fix the roughness but it was hard to control with the color ramp so I used MapRage node which was way easier than that. And now our texturing is done. Now I thought if we are having stains then water droplets would look awesome. So I just duplicated the body and used a geometry node setup like this and scattered the droplets of random size and at random places. You may feel like this is a really complex node setup but trust me, it isn't. If you just try this setup once for yourself or at least read the node titles you will easily understand what's going on. Here is the node setup and you can screenshot it if you want to practice. I used these two icospheres of different shapes for large and small drops to instance on the body. Gave it a simple glass shader and that's it. For background I found this great texture from Polyheaven. Downloaded it in 4K, used displacement modifier and placed bottle on it. Now if you want to know about using PBR textures and displacement methods, I would recommend you to watch this video in which I have explained about all the maps in detail. Link may be flashing above near the i button or given in the description. So go watch it after this video. This is the real fun part, the lighting. I used bunch of soft lights, large low intensity lights and a HDRI with low strength to light it up. Just experiment with different HDRIs, different strength, type of lights until it fits your mood. Time to add a camera. Set focal length to 75mm. If you want to refine the scene, just add depth of field. Set focus to empty near the bottle. Decrease the f-stops to increase blur. For camera motion, add a bezel curve, arrange it in a circle in a way that center is kept at bottle. Then by selecting camera and curve with curve being active object, press Ctrl P and select follow path. Now camera will follow the curve. Go to graph editor and delete keyframe of the curve. Under the path animation, keyframe the evaluation time from 0 to 100. Add tracking constraint to the camera as another empty set as target and also animate it going down to upward. You can now easily animate any motion of camera just by editing the bezel curve. Plain linear motions doesn't look interesting, so we are adding camera shape. Keyframe the location of target empty and use noise modifier in graph editor on all the three axes. Decrease the strength and increase the scale. I will use just a subtle amount or else there will be chaos.
last and cool part which will refine your scene is compositing. There isn't much that I have done, only the glare node set to fog glow and some changes in color balance. And Blender has introduced this cool feature that is really very helpful. We can now see composite results in real time viewport. Pretty cool right? I rendered this animation in 300 frames with 30 fps and it took almost 10 hours of rendering in 128 samples with denoising on. And here are the final results. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Tell me about your questions, opinions, experiences and let me know in the comment section below. I know this video is too late but I'm trying. So thank you for watching. Compositing makes massive difference to your shot.